where did your um, first exposure to studio work and what was it that, that really got you the bug for it? Um, when we do our GCSEs uh, and which school was it? This Prince Henry is in Evesham. Right, okay. I remember finishing history, the last one I had I finished history and I was with a guy who was in the band I was with in at the time and uh, you know, we kind of give each other the eye, you know, me outside after this and we took a walk uh, down the street and his dad was on the street corner. He said, come on boys, get in. Went, in, went back to the house, had some food and he goes, there you go, you stood really hard or whatever the term, what he said slipped this four track across the table. He was a musician, he had a little recording, like tape, reel to reel thing. So there you go son, you know, there's a load of cassettes, record your band. And we were both just like playing around with it kind of thing. Uh, and I just, that was where, that was it. I was thinking, you know, this is, this is amazing. I can go home and I can tweak with this. And then I ended up buying it off him when he got an eight track and then we kind of disbanded bands and then I got an eight track and I just spent ages and ages in my room just playing away with it and then uh, when that kind of died a death through being left on top of a car you know see you later <laughs> I thought oh I better get into something else let's get a computer and at that point where we were rehearsing in uh, early stages of Volta the guy there had a little studio in a computer a desk and he didn't really know how to use it and I was like okay we'll have a go with this and I'd spent years and years and years and years on that and then upgraded slowly and just just went from there. But, you know, being in a rehearsal complex, you could obviously get to get your guinea pigs. Oh, I'm going to record you guys next week for free. Let's let's you know. I didn't have any lessons. I just learned by getting it wrong. Um, you know, finding ways of which I oh, I quite like that sound. You know, never knowing why. You know, just just going with it. Um, um, yeah. So once I got to the computer stage, it was a sense of this is this is really what I want to be doing. What type of computer? It was just a PC, you know, right. with a sound card and, yeah. and, a, and a desk. Probably not that powerful compared. Very, to Very, very, very. You know, you could record loads on it, but you couldn't really do any post things because right. the computer would just go, you know, yeah. <laughs> go barely turn on. Like, why is one better than another? Why is say Pro Tools better than? There's nothing. There is nothing no. better than anything. Right. Nothing is better than anything. It's down to your ears and your creativity. You know, we could all sit there with the same software and make ten albums. They all sound completely different mm. with the same equipment. Even if we all recorded the same songs, they're all completely different because it's how you, it, the sound is in your hands when you play, and the sound is in your head when you when you record. Um, and it's, it's yeah, there is nothing better. It's what you like. So, what do the absolute world class studios have then? That Everyone that seems they, to... that they think that they can do a better sound than somebody else. I don't know. I don't think there's. There are some people that think that. Pro Tools is industry standard, right. and that seems to be the one that most people have, especially in America, the clients I've dealt with there, and there's a lot of Logic users um, in this country. But I, I guess that they think that because it's industry standard, or it has the word Pro in it, mm -hmm. that that's what you know that's what you use, that's what the pros use. But it doesn't really, it doesn't make a difference. It's just what you, what you like to drive. In the studio or, or in the studio, in, in the studio. they uh, turn up probably with their gear, hopefully. Mm. Uh, so, what are the sort of things that they do right or wrong from this moment? As on? long as people come in and want to have a good time and have no just leave the egos at the door and just say, let's just have a fucking great time. Let's just make some music. You know, it doesn't it doesn't matter what style of music it is. It doesn't matter whether I like it or not. If the attitude is right, it's the best music in the world. You know, if people come in, it doesn't matter whether they've got really good gear, because gear makes no difference. You sound how you sound, you know. Obviously, you know, if, you, if your drums sound a little bit bad, you know, let's get them tuned up or let's swap them around, you know, or, you know, or treat them in the computer or whatever. But as long as the person is having an absolutely awesome, stress-free time, that's the best time. It doesn't matter whether it's my band, your band, his band, their band, the new band, band I love working with, you know, just leave the egos at the door. It's people that are obsessed with my sound, like, that's my guitar amp, that's my drum kit, you know, it's a band, you know, it's not about you, it's about everybody, you know, uh, and even solo artists are less uh, egotistical, they just, yeah, this is me, that's what I do, mm -hmm. yeah, and you go, yeah, cool, great, but bands, you know, normally there's normally like, you know, one or two egotistical members, uh, born in ten bands, I'd say, most bands are just absolutely awesome, make my job incredibly easy. They turn up, they have no preconceptions of what they can do or whatever. It's a song. Oh, great, let's do it. Wicked. And everyone's like, yeah, that's amazing. Or, okay, that's not quite working. What can we do? 
and everybody kind of brings it together, or you know, we have a chat about it or something. But as long as as long as as long as they're well rehearsed, then you know, it's going to be fine. I'd imagine trying to please four people in the band with a finished sound is difficult as well, because yeah, they normally between the, normally between them, yes, more than more so than at me, mm. because they might be saying that you know someone didn't do their part this way or that way, or or you know bands will go away with a mix and come back and go. It's normally universally at me like, oh, we all think that that's too quiet or that's too loud. And just pff, change it or whatever. There's never, very rarely a disagreement. Uh, the only really time that they do argue is when someone's late or someone's got you know drunk the night before or something and they're not on par. That's normally what the arguments about. I've never really heard anything where bands have you know destroyed each other in the studio. I've been in a session once where someone's hit someone and then that's been the end of it. But I, you know, that was in my early days when I was kind of just. You know, sat there watching and learning in one of the biggest studios, um, and they were you know mature guys as well. Mm. So you know it was just kind of like, and that's the end of that. You know, the studio shouldn't be three hundred quid a day. Oh, they're three hundred quid a day because you're on a farm. You know, oh look at this nice hill or whatever, or look at that nice tree. You know, let's just get in the box and let's get working. You know. You know, it's nice to have the space to go and walk outside, of course, but not for an extra two hundred quid a day or whatever. Do producers have their own sound a bit to your ears as well? Oh yeah, every single every single person that I know uh, personally that's a producer. Obviously, you know, you know, famous people, but yeah, to actually know people. Everyone's got their own sound. No matter how they progress, it always sounds like them. And I think it's, I think it's the great. studio was the one with the first computer, which was the rehearsal room place. But he had a, a separate space. Which he eventually just boxed me in because I was there so much to just make a little room and stuff. That was the first studio that that, that I was able to do stuff in. The first studio I worked at was a place called FFG in Breeden. Got a part time job there, one day a week, and then it progressed and progressed as like more clients came to the table. Um, and then I've done work in studios overseas, much bigger studios. You know, the studios like maybe twenty years ago. The, the only studios you could go to and they just had everything you don't really need everything anymore you know you can record anywhere you know it's just nice to be in a the point I think the point of a studio is just nice to have some quiet time you know a space from bands you know so you're not you've got the drum kit there and I've worked in studios you know like the panic room in Evesham where the, you're all in the same room and I did that for many years just you know on and off between FFG and that um, I've never really been tied to one place so it's nice to go and see other people and how they get on and go and work in other places. But as time, as I've, with my client base has, has grown and um, things like that, I've just found I needed my own space. And the vacancy at, at Tower was just at the right time. Nice space, everybody need, can have their own space and just relax. You've got the right sound for any band. Just that's all, we, we can do that now, we just want to make it a lot smarter and keep the price down. That's, that's the, the goal and then just you know just keep going you get some sound engineers that can't do studio and some studio engineers that can't yeah. can't do live yeah. what, what's going on that makes both of them both there of those I don't have a straight answer all I know is people like James Willis you see them doing their job they do it you know day in day out for years and they just know because it like some they just know what, what it's all about live I've done live sound and I'm not very good at it I don't know why, I'm just not very good at it. I think maybe it's because I've spent so long doing sound where things take place, you know, gradually. Live, it's there and then. Deal with it. You know, there's a problem. Oh, you got to deal with it there and then. You know, you got to really... It's intuitive. You have a much more... Yeah, the process is much, I guess, you know... I guess it's much more stressful. Um, when I see people like Willis doing their job, you just think, wow. You know, and, and sound engineers I've worked with all across, you know, different types of venues, you, you know, playing in bands or working alongside them, just having chats to people, and you see people just turn a rig into this amazing sound, you think, how did you do that? But then they come in the studio and they don't know, you know, certain types of processes. There is no, I don't think there's any answer to that, other than they are two different things that look the same.